Welcome to another session of our lecture, Innovation Management and Marketing. We stopped talking, or we are still in the midst of uh, talking about promotional activities because it is such a broad topic being comprised of public relations, being comprised of uh, direct marketing, being comprised of social media marketing, digital marketing, online marketing. And um, last time we talked specifically about content marketing, which is providing content to the target audience, which is meaningful for the uh, recipients, not being so much product related. And uh, in the framework of uh, social media marketing, content marketing is one of the most important drivers nowadays to enhance the customer relationships and the brand loyalty. Why is that? Because we are bombarded with information. We talked about the information overload before and we have more information than we can ever perceive. So, and everybody's talking on uh, social media. So there is a big buzz and it's very, very difficult to be heard as a corporation, as a company, as an organization, when you want to talk about products and services, because then people are not very much fond of listening. So um, the three dimensions and factors that enhance content marketing are stories and that is that has always been the case um even in ancient times so storytelling is very very powerful if you uh, for example have to give a speech like i'm about to talk um to give a ted talk um it is it is about storytelling stories that are meaningful uh to the uh, to the target audience that is more interesting than if you just provide information so storytelling about experiencing um uh, experiences uh, some content which is meaningful and what you want to try to do you want to enkindle conversations not only conversations between the organization and the customers but also conversations among customers and you want to uh, you want the message to be spread you want the message to be spread to the audience so it is uh, it should be a story which is um, worthwhile spreadable so which is which which people like to um, to share via social media or via email and what is very important as well is that um, you have to you have to deliver content which provides value that is meaningful to um, the organization and to the customer and what is most important is that this value that you try to deliver is transcending. So it's going beyond the value of your own company because nobody's interested basically in your products and what the value proposition of your products is. But people are interested if you care about a greater um, meaning, a greater content, a greater context, which is more touching base on society issues, for example, in particular in today's world. So if you think about content marketing um, there, you can differentiate between different kind of uh, elements here. So one is emotional content. So that is um, if you look at the axis here, uh, you have emotional content. And you can also um, differentiate between purchase oriented content and attention grabbing content. So the iPad is not, <laughs> not working anymore. Um, so I have to do it with this one here, but it, uh, it's going to work as well. Um, so I need to turn on this uh, text marker. So uh, on the one hand side, if you look at the uh, emotional um, axis here, you can try to entertain people. You can try to inspire people. So this is more emotionally focused communication. Yeah. But you can also try, of course, to um, talk more about the product. So if you have some kind of uh, product um, demonstrations, so delivering product information. So th this is more about convincing somebody that your product is very, very good or superior to the product of competitors. 
You can also try to educate people. This is what we are doing um, by providing, for example, ebooks or articles or studies. This morning I, I shared a study about, um, and, and that is actually our topic. I shared a study coming from the Bertelsmann Foundation. Uh, and this uh, study is about breakthrough um, patterns. And uh, the finding was, simply speaking, that um, the United States and China, uh, they are dominating, or East Asia dominating uh, world recognized patterns, whereas Europe, and also in particular, uh, France, Spain, uh, Germany, are falling behind. So um, they're having less breakthrough uh, patterns which are meaningful in particular when it comes to key technology uh, subject areas such as um, digital. That is one of my favorite, um, I, I cannot really call it commercials. It is, like, like, like I said, th this is more this convincing, but it's also some kind of entertaining as well. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's, um, it's emotional content, but it certainly grabs the attention of, uh, of the audience because this guy here, um, the, the founder of Blendtec, Blendtec, probably you heard about, uh, about him and he has a series or he started a series um, <clears throat> in uh, uh, very early on, so about three, four, five, six years ago. Um, and this guy, Tom Dixon is his name, he's the founder of Blendec and, and they're providing all kinds of um, uh, apparel for the, uh, for the kitchen, so kitchen, uh, kitchen stuff. And um, he has a, has a machine here, this one. And in this machine, he's always blending, so destroying different kind of items. And um, the first one was um, here in, as of, 1st of March 2018 all his videos together they had more than 285 uh, million views with, which is very very good for a product demonstration video right because he's always uh, asking the question will it blend and then he's asking oh will it blend a Justin Bieber blu-ray for example or an iPad or a new iPhone 10 or whatever I don't know it's so funny and um, he, that is that is a brilliant idea. This is what I meant. He's always having the same kind of, uh, of videos. Go to YouTube and check it out. Um, it's very, very entertaining and probably you, um, you know him already. Okay. Uh, another very famous um, promotional activity was done by Volvo Trucks. And Volvo Trucks, what is specific about Volvo Trucks? It is a B2B company because usually People are always saying and claiming that um, all the clever advertisement or social media marketing is only applicable in the B2C market. But Volvo has proven with the Epic Split, this is the famous uh, promotional activity, the spot on YouTube where Jean-Claude Van Damme, the former action hero, uh, is doing a split between two Volvo trucks uh, going backwards. and. He, uh, they landed a viral hit with this uh, YouTube film. It has over 90 million downloads, which makes it one of the most widely watched commercials on YouTube ever. And they have, interestingly, they're always having um, a series of, um, of films, of spots about features of their products. For example, uh, on the right hand side, you can see a, a screenshot from um, the CEO of Volvo, Klaas Nielsen. And Klaas Nielsen, um, he made a film, or he had a film to be, uh, to be made here, um, The Hook, uh, and, and, and he's standing on a Volvo truck, and uh, this Volvo truck is just attached to a steel rope with a hook here at the beginning, just to show the robustness and the durability of the Volvo trucks. And even this spot got more than 3 million views. And um, this is how Volvo makes certain kind of product features coming alive, right? They're making product features tangible, graspable. So, uh, so they're not just claiming that, they're proving that via their commercials on YouTube. And those commercials only 
uh, run on YouTube. Another um, communication <clears throat> tool we have right now in today's world is um, that we are able, and we call that uh, via programmatic advertisement, to tailor and to design different kind of messages and deliver them to different kind of customers. Um, and one of the uh, all-time favorite campaigns of mine is uh, the Topshop at Zalando campaign. It is called Wherever You Are. And what um, Zalando wanted to do was um, they wanted to um, talk to their consumers and have them informed that more and more Zalando shops offer also the Topshop um, fashion brand, which is a London uh, based fashion brand and for that they hired the supermodel Carla de Levine to uh, to promote that but now what is interesting is they shot not one film but they shot 60,000 videos the only difference between the videos was <coughs> excuse me, that um, all the videos were different only by one word because the supermodel was pronouncing all the cities across Europe where Zalando provides top shop delivery. So via online, of course. But they made 60,000 videos and those videos were shown to people with respect to the location where they are based. So we call that location-based marketing or programmatic advertisement in, in, in conjunction here. Because if I'm living in, uh, for example, in Nuremberg and I, I went to Facebook, I was, I was seeing the Carla de Levine uh, promotional video for Nuremberg. If, if I'm living at the same day, huh, uh, another person is coming, uh, is visiting Facebook uh, in Munich. He's seeing Carla de Levine, different spot, pronouncing Munich. Like she was pronouncing some German names, uh, München or, or so, so on and so forth. So that is, um, that is very interesting. Now we cannot look into all, all kind of that. These are beautiful uh, examples of very, very powerful uh, storytelling. Okay, um, yeah, finally, um, now we, we heard a lot about best practice stories and examples and uh, I'm also a great um, supporter of social media marketing because it, you can be very, very powerful and effective in reaching millions of people um, with very, very low budget. However, of course, it has a downside. And we talked about that before when we talked about the metaphor of pinball and bowling. And uh, when we did that, we said that if you kick in the ball in social media, uh, you lose a bit of a control because you cannot control the reaction of the customer. And that is what is happening, uh, what was happening to Motrin. And Motrin is a painkiller um, uh, pharmaceutical uh, medicine. And now it is a late, uh, late example. Uh, so it's, it's uh, but it's not outdated. It, it's a classic example. And why I'm using this example is that uh, this is very well documented by the Harvard Business School. Uh, and Howard made a case study out of that. So we know precisely what happened. So what uh, Motrin did was they, um, they were launching a 43 uh, second commercial solely on internet. So not, not, not a TV spot uh, on their, on their homepage, etc., etc., and on the YouTube. And in this video, they are showing, uh, mama, mamas, so, uh, mothers, uh, carrying their baby around the neck in a sling, which is putting some stress, uh, on the neck. And as a result, some women may get headache and they say, okay, here, uh, it is kind of ibuprofen uh, based medicine and it's getting away the, uh, the headache. Now, not a big deal, not, an, not a really attention grabbing spot. Have a look, uh, have a look for the spot on the YouTube. Now, and that is so interesting here. 
on Saturday, uh, ele- um, uh, November fifteenth, uh, six ten, the blogger Bob Latin finds the video on the internet, and she complains on her website that the company makes fun of young moms carrying their babies close to the body. Now, it is a perception thing. Of course, that was not a funny commercial. So Motrine was not actually, or Johnson Johnson was not actually making fun objectively uh, of young moms. But Bob Latin perceives it to be like that. And what is happening or what was happening, this post is linked from other women on the web. And short time later, super blogger Amy Gates learns from this criticism and she uses Twitter, which is still the most speedy communication uh, around the world. And within a few minutes, and now that's interesting, all those learn by SMS and by Twitter who subscribe to her blog and to the hashtag um, about this uh, this incident. And that was also read by uh, Jessica Gottlieb, another super blogger, and she runs the, uh, the blog Los Angeles Moms. And still, and that is interesting, you can see it here, there's just um, about two hours later, Jessica Gottlieb, she responds massively using Twitter. Uh, she's linking the homepage and we don't have to translate that. We don't have to read it out loud. Uh, it is clear that she's not very much uh, amused about uh, what she found on the internet. So about the commercial. Okay, now you, you may say, okay, these are just two, three, four, five, six women talking about that. So what? But On the very uh, same day, still, another two hours later, roughly, uh, Jessica introduced a so-called hashtag, a hash mark. And uh, this hashtag is called, or was called, Motrine Moms. Now, within two hours, and that is so interesting, within two hours alone, this hashtag Motrine Moms ranks number 16 of the most discussed topics on Twitter worldwide, not in the US, worldwide, not in the US, worldwide, within two hours. 5,000 posts of more than 1,000 users are posted within two hours. What happens is another blogger, Kate Katja Presnell, takes all the posts together all the thousand and five thousand posts and makes short film uh, 20 minutes it's not a short film it's a 20 minutes film and she puts it on youtube on the very same day you see in the night uh, they're not sleeping so they're, they're just uploading videos uh she up- upload, uploads the uh, the youtube film now the same weekend early in the morning she's getting up uh and the debate rages on the internet and a uh, couple of a couple of weeks later, by December, her video found more than 80,000 viewers. Now, the pharmaceutical company, the parent company of, um, uh, of, the, um, of, the, uh, um, of the originator, of the manufacturer of the uh, uh, pharmaceutical product, Johnson & Johnson, um, they have more than 60 billion in sales. They were not prepared for this kind of attack. Um, and but they reacted they reacted and they reacted on sunday they reacted on sunday so 10 hours after um katya presner gets up early in the morning the head of marketing kathy whitmer takes the entire motrine page from the internet and she quickly apologizes to the bloggers via email but it was too late it was too late because Another two hours later, after the apology, all the US media, the major ones, and the news station, Reuters, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Advertising, Forbes, they were writing about this uh, incident. On Monday, so just after the weekend, 11 a.m. in the morning, the McNeil, uh, that is the company issuing the, uh, producing the um, ibuprofen, 
um, puts the Motrine website on the internet again without the ad and with a short apology, but it was already too late. Um, and uh, there is an estimate that this um, kind of incident or this miscommunication from McNeil or from Johnson & Johnson did cost the company more than $1 billion. Um, the same week on Thursday, they officially apologize on the website. We've heard about your concerns about the ad that was featured on our site. We are parents ourselves. We take feedback from mom very, very seriously. We are in process of removing that. It will unfortunately take a bit time to remove it from our magazine advertisement, etc., etc. So, as a concept, what is the learning out of that? Because uh, as a as a consequence, what we are doing is we are um, our companies, organizations. They are joining so-called block councils. So they have agencies. Um, looking into what is happening on the internet and they're watching that they're monitoring that in real time in order to be able to react on time uh, to react on time means within um, a short period so let's say 15 minutes so not 15 hours not not one day 15 minutes one five minutes and um, <laughs> there is another example i love very very much it is about this moment of truth if you look at the uh, value proposition first, so the value proposition of FedEx, um, we will uh, produce superior financial returns. Safety will be the first consideration in all of our operations. OK, that sounds great. And FedEx is doing um, overall, they're doing a good job. Now, what is what was happening was uh, and that is interesting. Look for that. Um, look for the title FedEx guy throwing my computer monitor. So it, it's not a big video. Looks like somebody made it with a mobile phone, whatever. And there is a FedEx guy, obviously a FedEx guy. Probably he's an actor. We, who knows? But uh, this looks like a FedEx uh, car. And this FedEx guy is going over to the, um, to the fence here, to the gate. And what he's actually doing, he's throwing a package which which can recognize as containing a computer monitor over the uh, over the gate. So this is how FedEx is delivering products. Now, what is interesting again is that this video has been viewed close to 10 million times. So it's not 900 times, it's 10 million times. Now, estimate the effect that this may have on the perception of FedEx as a reliable logistics company. Now we are, and that is re that is relevant for uh, for politics as well. Now, how do you manage crisis? Now, first, if something is uh, published on on the internet, for example, or in some some kind of forum, etc., and then it's discussed in those kind of forums or something is published on TV and then it's discussed in forums, it is not too late. So, but you should react in this phase, ideally before the acceleration phase takes place, before it is picked up by Twitter and Facebook. But this is the point of no return here. This is the point of no return. If you haven't reacted until then and uh, there is a dissemination in traditional news, in traditional media, being covered by Focus, Spiegel Online, uh, ZDF, wh whatever, uh, it's too late. So the issue is identified too late. The reaction is too late because then it is later also picked up by offline media and the news agency uh, agencies. And then the impact um, is, uh, from a negative perspective, is too, se too severe. It's more severe, of course. And then finally, of course, at the end of the day, of course, there's a decline, attention declines as well as we've seen that. But in order to prevent the damage here, so that may be also seen, um, you, you can also um, uh, put here probably that is, is euros as well, <laughs> euros probably or dollars of, uh, of loss you, you encounter or negative due to negative public relations or publicity. Um, that of course the negative impact is the higher, the more you take time to respond to the issue. In general, what can we do? Three key measures 
uh, can be recommended to avoid these kind of crises. One, credibility with bloggers on the internet has to be built in advance, um, not after incidents uh, happened already. No, then it's too late to apologize, to apologize. But first is to connect with the, and, and we mentioned that before, when we talked about the triangle, you remember that, the triangle, about people posting, people reading, um, and people uh, who are reacting. You have to get hold of the people who are actively publishing something, the key opinion leaders. And the web events have to be monitored in real time, 24 seven, real time. Um, I talked to, and we, we worked with Adidas, and Adidas, um, has ju they just have 50 people, 50 people, five zero people only in social media. What are the, those people doing? They're only reading. They're only reading what is written about Adidas, but also what is written about Puma and, and, and uh, New Balance, uh, not only on Twitter and Facebook, but also in every kind of forum, uh, in every kind of comment, etc., etc. So it takes a lot of resources as well. And you need to have immediate reaction immediate swift reaction which is within one five minutes 15 minutes if a company waits too long the tenor so of the tonality of the discussion has already been established many links are created and then of course it is also backfiring long time afterwards as well because you can still find um, negative posts long time later if there is a lot of um, um, comment, commenting on, on, on those negative kind of posts, this, uh, this, this is still to be found on the, uh, on the internet. And finally, this is the last slide on communication. Performance evaluation is difficult. The, the great Henry Ford knew it all, uh, all, all before, so long ago. He said, half, the, half of the money I spend on advertisement is wasted money, half of the money but I don't know which half it is. Uh, so it is clear that uh, if you spend money on advertisement, that is generating attention, that is generating sales, that is generating profitability. However, you don't, you're not so sure, it's not a mathematical formula. So you're not sure about the exact amount of increase that is due to a certain kind of campaign because it's always multi-dimensional. Okay, we don't need that. That is a bit. Yeah, probably. Um, There's two, two, two more slides here in this one. Um, Mark Twain said, uh, the reports of my death were greatly exaggerated. Now, that also applies for television. So before we start and say, okay, television is dead, rest in peace, television, um, we, we, we should appreciate that television is still the most important uh, medium uh, to be used by, by the masses if you want to get hold of uh, millions of, uh, of consumers. However, it's a changing world. So in the past, it was that customers or families were assembling around the, the television like they were assembling around the fireplace in ancient times. But now they may be still assembly, being assembling around the, uh, the television, but everybody is using his or her own device. So it is a changing world. In the past, there was communication, and we mentioned that before, being run as a monologue. So the company was in power, therefore it's, it's, it's bigger here, and the customers, they're, they're, they could all, all only react. They were not in power because they had no voice. Okay, they could complain, uh, writing to the company a letter or whatever. But in today's world, of course, as uh, more and more people are connected to the internet, are online, having social media accounts, it is a communication among equals. Uh, and therefore, the customers are as powerful as the companies when it comes to communication. And tomorrow, not too, too long from now, customers will, and we are pretty sure about that, will dominate the communication, will be more powerful than, uh, than the company because um, of uh, digital and because of the interconnectedness. Today's customers are rather cats than dogs. In the past, customers were 
a bit like dogs. And, and, and that kind of metaphor is coming from Sterat. Um, he was the founder of an advertising agencies. And uh, dogs are trained and domesticated. Oh, there's duplication here. They learn via repetition. Awareness is key. Uh, but today's customers are more like cats. So this, this image of the, uh, of the dog means that if you have a commercial being shown many, many times over and over and over again, some, there is some reaction. So it's like with a Pavlov dog, the customer is buying the product. But now today's customers are more like cats. They're independent, they're autonomous, they're digital and mobile, and they want to participate in decision making. They want to be treated as equal to the, uh, to the organization. And that is um, what um, I was talking about before. The traditional communication model has to be elaborated, has to be developed into a more encompassing model of market communication, which is comprised of four communication styles. Now, here is the interaction between the company and the customers. And here's the interaction between the customers themselves. Now, if you look at the uh, the low one here. This is low and that is low. Th then you have the traditional one way advertisement, as we've seen in the metaphor of the bowling. So that is the bowling approach. The company throws a message towards the audience and hopes for some effect. Now, uh, the second thing is here, the interaction between the company and the customers is increasing. This is um, customer driven interaction, for example, via key account management one to one approach. So um, a company is trying to get in touch with certain kind of customers and but now it's not no longer a monologue, but it's more um, of a dialogue. And the next one is this viral marketing. Viral marketing means that um, you have a message, you throw it to the audience and then this message is bouncing uh, into one direction, bouncing one to, from one customer to another customer. And that is called uh, viral marketing. So the, the, the communication is spreading like a virus. And in social media times and what, what we should aim at playing is we should all play social um, pinball, which we explained before. You kick in the ball, the ball gets uh, from one customer to another. It's get back, back to the company, but then it get, it's kicked back in so there's uh, there are arrows going in in two directions uh, that is not happening here okay that was uh, our session for today about innovation management and marketing we finished the very very lengthy chapter on uh, communication i as always i stay in the line i end the recording here thanks very much and see you for another video soon cheers and bye bye